Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're in Big Dog Garage, and uh, we're attempting to weld some titanium. I want to introduce you uh, to Bernard Euclid. And uh, Bernard, what is your title in this company here? I'm general manager. General manager. Okay, well, I see that you fabricate, you do just about everything that there is. I do, I do a lot of fabrication, machining, and welding. And is it yeah. is it true that you do racing also? I do. I, I race a car, I race an Atlantic car, I race a motorcycle, and I race a sidecar, which is what we're looking at now. Okay, so this this is a sidecar, and you, you called it a Formula One sidecar? It's a Formula One sidecar, yeah. All right, how many horsepower or CC is this? Well, it's a one liter Yamaha motor, and we hope to get about 195 horsepower. Out of it. Okay, now exactly how fast can this go? I expect about 185 miles an hour. Okay, now you're the driver? I'm the driver, yeah. And, and then you have a secondary passenger that never really sits down? He, no, he climbs, he's called a monkey. And he climbs all over the back end of it to, to distribute his weight, either left turns or right turns. On the straightaway, he tucks down to get out of the wind. That's he's, he's a very important part of it. Okay, so we're, we're building this up. Uh, this is brand new, it looks like to this me. It's a new Yamaha engine. And, uh, okay, now we're gonna we're gonna break this down into a couple of different categories, a couple of different segments. But uh, what I see here is an exhaust system. This this is the original Yamaha exhaust system. Of course, it was originally intended to go on like that with the exhaust port to back. Now, in our case, we can't go do that. We're gonna have to go out the front. Okay. So it, eventually, you have to put the muffler to it. And you've got this uh, this U tube, that, and that appears to be like a is that a stainless steel? This is a stainless steel tubing. Yeah. So what, what I envision here is that you know first of all get these things turned around so they'll fa face the motor. Straighten out this part here so we can put it, a U bend on it, just stainless, and then I have a, a short muffler that goes in here and it comes out the side as it would to pipe out the side. Okay. All this is located between my legs when I'm sitting in it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two categories. And category one is you can't weld stainless steel to titanium. So what we have to use is, is the bracketry or, or this particular piece. We're going we're to cut off and re-weld. Uh, so the challenge here is to make sure that, uh, that we can weld this in place in the right position and then we're going to be cutting these, turning them around, and that's going to be quite a challenge. So uh, segment one, uh, we're going to get started and uh, show you how we tape off. Titanium is a little different material to weld. Uh, you have to do different shielding techniques, but uh, we're going to show you the best field welding techniques. So stay tuned, and uh, we've got more to come. Okay, Bernard, this is the first step, and it is my understanding we're going to use the existing part and yeah, we need to make this come out straight. Yeah, because we need to come back. Um, I want to get a piece of stainless on here that we can do a U-bend and come back into a muffler laying on top of this. So in order to make that happen, we're going to have to get this awkward upward bend out of it. Okay, so this, this particular bracket, you're no longer going to need. Is that, is that a correct, correct statement? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. so, so I'm going to take a little slit saw on these two wells. And, and, and I'll take this bracket off. Right. Uh, the next step is we're going to end up cutting somewhere where it's still round and it doesn't go into a bend. So yeah. this is a flat surface that we want to we want to maintain. Yeah. Okay. Then after we get that to a point where we can straighten it, we're going to make another cut here somewhere. We'll we'll know in a few minutes. So we cut this off. We cut this piece off. We'll prep it. We'll clean it up. Remember. This is a uh, somewhat of a commercially pure titanium, and the reason you can tell that is because it's been bent and formed. And, and you can tell by the bends here that uh, they're pretty tight bends. Now, if you're into the alloy type titanium, like 6'4", 3'2 very difficult to bend. So we're going to treat this just like commercially pure titanium, and uh, we still have to, we have to cut it. We've got to uh, prep it. We've got to get all the oxides off. And uh, you'll see the, uh, the operation as we go step by step. When you say a, a commercially pure, um, is this like a, a grade two? It's like a grade two, that's correct. Yes. 
Yeah, and uh, you'll see titanium grade in different ways. Sometimes you'll hear it in generic form. Generic form is grade one, two, three, four, and so on. And grade two is commercially pure. And what that means is it's got a tensile strength of about 60 KSI in strength. It's got very good elongation, good formability. You can do things with this that you can do with normal sheet metal. It's just that when you weld it, you got to weld it with a lot of argon. And that's uh, the part that I play in all this. Right, right, right. Okay, now you can see I, I cut a little groove or a little slot right here. Now we're going to remove this bracket and it's gone. It's, uh, we're trashing it. There's no reason to salvage it. But something that's really critical on titanium is you just don't want to overheat the material while you're grinding or cutting a slot in it. So don't put too much pressure on it. You don't want the material to get cherry red. If it gets cherry red, it's going to turn blue on you. you got oxide. So you make a slit, uh, just go down so far, and then make another cut, another, another, another. Just light pressure each time. And when you do that, you can cut it down far enough. And I didn't, I didn't damage the tube. I may have to do a repair on this tube, but here's a remaining weld, and we're going to polish it down as well. Again, we can't put too much pressure on it when we polish it, so I'm going to put a couple of different wheels on here, and that'll be the next step, polishing this down. Then what we're going to do is we're going to measure, we're going to cut, we're going to salvage this little piece right here. That's what's critical, because we're going to be putting stainless steel to titanium, and we have to do it through this type of bracketry. Okay, I've, I've got this part prepped, and this is, this is how it's going to fit up. It's going to fit here, and, you know, we made this straight. You know, it, it did have a bend to it. And I look at it, and there's not a lot of mismatch. There's some. Uh, it may be a little bit of out of round, but uh, not more than half the material thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this off, and I'm going to poke some holes in it. I'm also going to tape these four holes off, but I'm going to insert an argon, argon in. And if you notice, I've got a little diffuser on the end here, and that's to shoot the argon out and make it go into a kind of a spray mist instead of just shoot bulk argon. So I'm going to put it in one of these ports, tape it all off, and what I expect to feel is a positive pressure come out here. I'm going to tape this off, and I'm going to poke a few holes and see if I can feel a positive pressure. So that's my next step. Okay, now that I put this piece in place and I tacked it, you'll notice that the tack wells, they're not very big. I got tacks about every half inch, maybe one inch apart. Okay, anytime I weld titanium or a reactive alloy or I just want better gas coverage, I'll put on this jumbo gas lens. Now this, this is designed for any type of torch. Now I happen to have an air cool torch here. This is a 17 style torch, so it has its entire setup just for the 17. This, uh, this same torch setup will not fit a 20. You have to have a, an exclusive 20 setup. So just so you know, you've got to match this and the components to your torch. I'm going to be running at about 35 CFH uh, of argon. And again, I'm going to try to keep it in a very flat 1G position. I need the argon to flow as much as possible. I can't run more than about an inch without having some kind of a gas trail or some additional uh, shielding. So I'm just going to run about three quarters of an inch and stop. Let it cool off. And I may even rotate and uh, it, you know, eventually you get the job done. But when you're only doing one part, sometimes that's the best way to do it. Okay, now what I've done is I've, I've taped off all four ports here. I've introduced argon into this port, and I've got a dual flow meter regulator. Now, the reason that that's important is I've only got one bottle of gas. So I want to be able to run a gas backup, and I want to be able to run my torch with the same gas bottle. Okay, you can see I just made a very short weld, dabbed the filler material, and I only used about 60, 65 amps because it's... Uh, uh, about 062 wall thickness. So I'm going to let it cool down to where I can touch it and then I'll resume my weld and I'll just do that all the way around.
Okay, Bernard, we, we um, you know, we cut off the old piece, we cut off the bracket, uh, we put the new piece on, purged it all out, uh, welded it by hand, rotated it, um, and we're, we're ready to move on to the next step, but I need for you to look at it and make sure it's exactly the way you want it to be. Not the first time you've done this, huh? I thought these, these, these machine-made wells were good, but this, this is fabulous. <laughs> well, thank you. This I tell you what, is. titanium makes you look good. Just so when you, know. you do it right, it makes you look good, huh? <laughs> it if does. You, if you don't, it's going to be really bad. Yeah, it can go the other way as well. But, yeah, uh, it, it wets out very nicely. And if you've never right. welded titanium, if you've welded stainless steel, this wets out even nicer. Nice. So just get everything purged out correctly. You saw the jumbo gas lens that I was using. So um, uh, if if you're good to go, we're going to move on to the next uh, I guess episode. That's the key to it: is have everything nice and clean clean so it doesn't yep. get contaminated exactly now since this was a used part with carbon in it did that cause a problem it, it right now what happened is when i made the cut i went ahead and deburred it and i took out any carbon okay. uh, only you know an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from where the weld would penetrate right. so uh no it, it didn't cause a problem at all beautiful all right well hey thanks for watching tig time i'm mr tig Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig. I'm Mr. Time. <laughs>